Okay, so uh, this is a uh, board meeting of the Board of Health of Sunderland, June 22nd, and my computer says it's 6.06 .06 p.m. So uh, we will open the meeting, and uh, I guess, uh, can I have a motion to open the meeting since I'm the chair? Oh, um, motion to open the meeting at 6.06. .06. Okay, and a second. second. Thank second. you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay, it's opened at 6.06. Uh, today, uh, in the meeting, we have uh, the meeting due to the COVID, um, Governor Baker's order, the meeting is conducted via remote participation, and uh, there's no in-person attendance. However, the public was uh, notified and given access to the proceedings in real time via um, Zoom, which was posted with our minutes, the link, um, the Zoom meeting link, as well as telephone links into this meeting. Uh, first, Oh, and uh, presently in the meeting is uh, Bruce Bennett, Board of Health member, Ken Kushai, Board of Health member, uh, Stephen Ball, with the uh, inspector, health inspector, and Gina McNeely, health inspector, and Glenn Hamill, who is the owner of the corner store for a, an appointment. First on our agenda though is the reorganization of the board due to the um, election. Bruce Bennett was elected as a Board of Health member and um, so the reorganization of the board is we have a chair and a secretary. So our, I'm the, I am the chair and I have been the chair and the secretary was um, Christy. And Bruce, you've uh, taken that slot. Um, right now, we're not really doing secretarial work because our administrator is using the Zoom meetings to transcribe minutes. So it's kind of working out good for us. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but um, so here's kind of the thing. I've been the chair, oh, I'm not sure how long now. Um, I, I guess I don't have a problem staying the chair, but if, if anybody else wants to be the chair, I, I don't have a problem handing that over either. So Ken or Bruce? It's all you, yours. It's all mine. <laughs> Ken? I can... Oh, great. <laughs> okay, I remain the chair. I'd like um, to nominate Ken to be the secretary. All right, Ken, we will, you want to, we'll make you secretary again. I think you were secretary once before. Yes, but you couldn't read my hand scratching. Well, we'll work on it. We all <laughs> have to do things lately that, you know. All right, so the chair remains. Aitlin, secretary, Ken. Now, um, Bruce, you're, uh, okay, so wait, let's just get things done. Uh, the chair remains Caitlin, the secretary is Ken. Uh, do we have, uh, we'll vote on that. Um, yeah, well, we'll open it up for discussion. Anybody have any discussions? Steve, Gina? The, the One Peanut Gallery, have any discussion, Glenn? <laughs> Okay, nope. um, discussion's closed. Want to vote on this? All in favor of uh, these positions? Aye. 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 Okay, three zero. Okay, um, Bruce, so you are in upstate New York. Are you in upstate New York right now? Yes. Do you come, when do you come back or do you? <laughs> I'll be back in the middle of July. Oh, okay. All right. And do you do, you do like a part-time, half-time thing or does it just do you go up and come back? part-time okay 
so you come if we if we do have meetings come back um you we get to meet you i mean i i kind of know you a little bit but our meetings are much more fun in person mm -hmm. i promise <laughs> oh by the way bruce uh welcome aboard yeah. thank you ken you're welcome Okay, so um, I guess we'll open it up. Our first thing is appointments. This appointment kind of happened um, suddenly. So I am going to have, uh, oh good, Steve took himself off of, uh, off of mute. So we had a situation come up um, the past couple of weeks, we've had some more than one uh, complaint about the corner store um, not um, wearing masks, the uh, people behind the counter and then other um, customers inside not wearing masks. And uh, so we uh, turned it over to our health agent and um, we then we received a, a, a follow-up call um, from a different person stating that uh, there was no masks being worn again. So um, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Steve Wall and for Bruce and for Ken to let you know because you aren't you can't see. Uh, Glenn Hamill, the owner of the corner store, is here. So I'm going to let Steve explain what he did and why Glenn is here. All right, so in response to a message, a voicemail message that was left on the town hall, I conducted an inspection of the corner store on Friday morning. Uh, I observed Glenn and a delivery person not wearing masks while they were out in the store going through inventory of a recent delivery. They uh, they apparently saw me because they went into the back room and then came back out with masks on. I then uh, went back, talked to Glenn in his office, gave him copies of the Massachusetts order requiring masks, gave him copies of their guidance for that, a question and information sheet on how to do it. Also copies of MGL chapter 111 section 30 that allowed me as a health agent to enforce that code. Also section 40, uh, chapter 40, and the section escapes me right now that allows for a $300 penalty for violations of the, the mask wearing code. And finally, I gave him a photocopy of section eight paragraph of 404.11 of the Federal Food Code that requires an operation to cease a business, a food service business to cease operations if a, there's a pandemic or communicable diseases. And uh, then I said, um, I would then go to the Board of Health meeting Monday evening and recommend to the board that rather than pursue a $300 fine, which is appealable through the court system, we just close the store for future violations. Glenn then asked if he could attend the Board of Health meeting. I said, absolutely, please do. And here he is. Okay, it looks like we lost Bruce. <laughs> um, so let's just wait one second. Let's see if we get Bruce back. I love technology. Oh, well, it makes it so convenient, doesn't it? Yeah. Mm. The equivalent is if this was a real meeting of Bruce falling off his chair. <laughs>
Well, while we're waiting for him to hear from Steve, I mean, Bruce. Hi, Steve. Hey, Cam. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Good. I'm glad to hear that. I'm recovering. And how Excellent. about you? Are you recovering pretty well, too? I, I have no complaints. Oh, go good. Right. Good, great. How's the family? Everybody healthy? Uh, they're well, yes. So far, good. so good. Okay. It, Bruce, are you on? I, I, I lost you for some reason. I think my internet went out. Okay. All right. So I'm, did, I'm on by phone now. That's great. Thank you so much. Did you hear, um, when did we lose you? I, I, I was uh, thinking, Steve was just starting to talk about what he found after he got there Friday morning. Okay. And Steve. then I, I don't know what happened after that. <laughs> okay. Steve, if you could repeat. Yes. So, um, in a nutshell, uh, Glenn and a delivery person were in the store not wearing masks. Um, I was within their line of sight. They went disappeared in the back room I, uh, and came back wearing masks. I spoke with Glenn later on in his office, gave him literature, uh, the requirements from the state to wear them, the guidance, how to wear them, an information sheet with some more questions and answers about masks copies of the laws giving uh, the board the authority to enforce that and a copy of the food code which requires a an establishment to cease operations if they're in a communicable disease situation I can get a copy I can read that if people want to know it um, I told showed Glenn the section where the board is allowed to find three three hundred dollars per violation enforceable through district court and also the part where uh, the Board of Health can simply close the operation. I then suggested that I would go to the Board of Health and talk to them about pulling his permit rather than having uh, three hundred dollars fines which would tie us up in the court system considerably. And at what point Glenn asked if he could attend the board of me health meeting, I encouraged him to do so. And here he is. Okay. All right. Um, so Glenn, do you want to address us? You have to unmute. There you go. That's better? Yep. Can you hear me? Okay. <clears throat> um, okay. Hello, all. Um, I just want to go on record as basically saying that up until the first visit, which was the week prior to last week when Stephen came in on the first phone calls, I guess, um, I was not particularly thrilled and really complying, to be honest with you, of wearing the mask myself. And I also basically told my employees mistakenly that if they would like to wear one, I have no problem with it. But if they don't want to wear one, I was also fine with that. Uh, now realize that that was wrong. And after his first visit, I did start wearing the mask daily, every day. Uh, I will be the first to admit that occasionally I will go into the back room and do paperwork and I may come out to go to the safe to pull money out and I have been known to not wear the mask when I do that, which obviously is a mistake. Um, the morning that he did come in, he did catch me checking in the Coke vendor and same, same scenario. I was in the back doing paperwork for half an hour, had been wearing my mask all morning. Um, and when the Coke delivery person came in and put his stuff out on the floor, uh, I went to check it in, didn't notice or, or wasn't, 100% paying attention that he did not have a mask on either. Uh, my employee that works up front, Amber, who does the food and wears the mask daily every day, um, basically came back and said that the health inspector was there. And that's why we went in the back room and put the masks on. <clears throat> All of this is, I'm not debating any of it. Um, what I'm very nervous about is if, if my food permit gets pulled or, and, and, and maybe you can I don't know the difference here. Are you planning on, if, if this happens again, pulling the food permit, Steve, or are you closing the store, period? 
uh, it would certainly be a closure, <clears throat> excuse me, temporary closure. And I would then consult with the board for direction as to what they wanted to do. So close the store permanently, not just the food permit area, it's the whole store. I would close the whole store because there's no distinction between whether you're in this, when you're not wearing a mask, there's no distinction whether or not somebody is in there to buy food or whether or not they're in there to buy candy bars or anything else. So the exposure risk is the same irrespective of why they're there. Okay. All right. But Glenn, Here's the thing, that is the absolute positive last thing that the Board of Health of Sunderland wants to do. That is my whole, I mean, I've been doing this for 10 something years. Yep. My whole guiding principle on the Board of Health is to be to, is for the health and safety of our citizens and to help the owners and the purveyors of food, whether it's the caterers or the restaurants, to be safe, okay? Yes. My guiding principles are not to punish, to shut down, to fine, to, you know, to, to, to fine the landlords, to, that's not our, that is not our job. That is not what we want to do. Right. So I'm not looking for ways to get you around being shut down. I'm not looking for ways. I'm looking for ways to get you so that we don't have people calling us and we don't have people upset with you and we don't have people saying, I'm never going to the corner store again. Right. Okay. That's what I want. I'm not here to say, how can we screw Glenn? Right, right. How can we yeah. give him as many $300 fines as possible and then shut him down? <laughs> no, I, okay. I understand that. Yep. So what I want is when we get these phone calls and these people are, they're not, they're not being, um, they're not these like angry Raw, raw, raw phone calls. They're like, do you know? And then they go on with this little, like, this list of, well, this happened, and then this, and I have a respiratory disorder, and I said this and this, and then Glenn said this, and they seem, um, they're not, they're not bitter, but they're concerned, and they're upset, but... Yes. It wasn't like a raving lunatic and I got a call from a woman. We got a call from a man. You know, I'm trying to say like these aren't, um, you know, these aren't like crazy people. They're people who are very concerned. Right. Yes. And so I want to protect you and I want to protect them. Mm -hmm. And what we, Steve often says <laughs> is people don't have to get sick. Like when, you know, when we talk about um, bad food or food that, you know, tainted food and stuff yeah. like that. Yep. People don't actually have to get sick because of your food. They have to think they did. Right. And that's what we want to, you know, have you build, we want to have you say, oh no, I follow every rule. I do X, Y, and Z. So you didn't get sick because of me. Right. This is along the same lines. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I, we want people to feel safe going into the Sunderland businesses. And, you know, so that's why when, when Steve said, you said you wanted to come to a board of health meeting, I'm like, great. Yes. How can we help Glenn, you know, make people feel like, come on into to the corner store. Right. You're an amazing resource for Sunderland. We all, you've seen me there. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're an amazing, you are the go-to place in Sunderland. So I want to make you the happy go-to place in Sunderland, not, you know, Glenn is X, Y, and Z, and what are we going to do about this? Yeah, Glenn's revolting and refusing to wear a mask, and yeah, we can't have that. And you know? I'll, I'll, like I said earlier, I'll be honest. In, in the beginning, I was very much against it. I don't like wearing it. Nobody. Uh, but I, I give you my word going forward that I will have that on every day 
all the time when I'm in that store, other than if I'm in the back room doing paperwork, you know, by myself, obviously. But um, can you put sticky note on your door, on the yeah. door jam? Do you yeah. have your mask on? Yep. Yeah. I yeah. just I just leave it on. If I take it off, I actually don't take it off. I just pull it down a little bit. So if I start to walk back out, it goes right back up again. So that's a great that's a great thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. I hate wearing the mask. It's right. hot. It's it kind of makes me claustrophobic. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, I wear. And it. Caitlin's and Caitlin's not the only one. <laughs> oh no! I, I hate wearing the mask too. I I felt the same way, and you know, I, I I don't know why I was so basically to be blunt, pig-headed about it because I was following the rules. I go into other stores all the time to shop. I go to Walmart. I go to BJ's, Restaurant Depot. And I bring my mask with me. And when I get out of the car, I put it on. Yeah. And I've done it a couple of times, gotten all the way to the door of a store and gone, oh, I didn't get my mask. Turn around and go back and get it, which I do see all the time, too. People come to the front door, grab the handle, and then they turn around and go get the mask, and then they come back. Um, so you, you have my commitment that, that I and my staff, from this point going forward, we will have masks on at, at all times. What I'm a little concerned about is there are a lot of people out there that don't want to wear them, that refuse to wear them. And uh, what I don't want to have happen is potentially another customer calls in and says, hey, there, there's, it's not so much the employees, but it's customers in the store that aren't wearing masks. And Steve comes in to see and just so happens to walk in and there's a local person or whoever, it doesn't matter who it is, uh, not wearing a mask. And then here we go, bam, I'm closed and I'm out of business. And uh, that's the hard part because I have been talking to the customers and I have been saying, you know, please, you, you need to wear a mask. It, it, it is the rules. It is, I don't, I don't really know if it's a law or not, but it is the rules and I have to enforce it. And if you're not going to wear a mask, you can't come in here. And 99% of the people are fine with it. You know, they say, oh, I'm sorry, my bad. They'll pull their shirt up. I've got extra masks. I've got three or 400 of the disposable ones in my store and I'll hand them a mask. But there are a few that refuse to wear it. That basically have an attitude and they're, they're willing to dig their heels in and, you know, what do I do at that point? You know, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to physically throw them out. No, 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 um, no. And I no, told all my employees no. that we don't want to get into confrontations with customers. No. No. And I guarantee you, by the time, you, if you were to call the police department, and I hate to do that for yeah. a small thing like this, but if you, by the time you call the police department, they're going to be long gone. Yep. The Any only suggestions? the only suggestion I have is you just say to them, look, the Board of Health tells me I, I, I can't serve you. You, you. You've got to. And if they just go in, if they ignore you, they put your stuff up, they put their stuff up on the counter and you know, you got to make a judgment call. Um, do not get into a fight. Do not get into a, you know, an argument. Right. Yep. Um, um, can, can I make a, uh, well, I don't know if we want to call it a suggestion or not. Sure. Um, you see a lot of signs in places that says no shoes, no shirt, no service. Yeah, I mean, I've got the note up on the uh, on the front door that basically said, and I worded it specifically that says, you know, per the governor of Massachusetts, you know, masks must be worn to come in. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. It's it's there. It doesn't mean that people see it. Doesn't mean that people mind it. Most people do. Most that's I think where the people are coming up and, oops, I forgot my mask. They see the sign and they go back and get it. But yep. Can I can I ask what the penalty to the customer is if he refuses to wear a mask in there? They can have a three hundred dollar ticket also. And who issues that? Uh, the police department or one of our housing. Oh, one of housing. <laughs> one of our health agents. Okay. Does it, do you do you have a shield up in front of the uh, the counter, Glenn, where the where yes. the people check in and out? Yes. Okay. I I yes. just think it's extreme to shut a business down for not wearing a mask. Well. Um, even the fine, I think, is kind of extreme. Um, and and I, I believe in Franklin County, the cases are minimal of, of COVID. How many? How many? How many cases, Steve, in uh, Franklin County? Well, it yeah, the cases are in Franklin County. The cases are in just in the low hundreds. 
358, I believe, was the last number I heard. You know, um, and that's... That's from the beginning, right, Ken? Uh, well, I don't know about from the beginning. Well, I'm assuming that's what it is. Okay. Okay. So, um, um, may I say a couple things? Yeah. One is... Um, there's a different, I see a difference between the occasional customer who doesn't wear a mask and the proprietor and employees of the business who are setting the example. And I don't intend to uh, shut your store down if I walk in and there's a customer without a mask on. That, that's not my intention. Mm -hmm. The other thing is the co-op that I belong to up the street from where I live has a sign up that requires masks. And um, they put a sign up that say, if you don't wear, if you do not want to wear a mask, we are happy to provide curbside service for you. So they'll bring out whatever you want. If you don't want to wear a mask, they'll just, you can tell them what you want. They'll bring it out and okay. charge you. No, that's, a, that's actually a good idea. Yeah, I don't have a problem with that. Yeah. Oh. But but, good yeah. suggestion, Steve. Glenn, I honestly, like I said, with our, you know, we're trying to make an atmosphere. We're trying to make the atmosphere of safety. Yeah. Um, it is not, punishment is not what we're here for. Um, when I, when we quote unquote deputized the police to be health, to be agents of the health department, mm -hmm. I had a very long talk with the police chief about the issuing of the $300 tickets. Right. And our goal is not to issue these tickets. Our goal is to explain to the people who are refusing to wear the masks why the governor has, why the masks are being required. It, it's not to keep you from getting COVID. It's to lessen the spread out of your mouth. Right. It's not, you know, and, and this is, you know, and the police are driving around with extra masks and saying, here, how about I give you one? Right. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. Then we, we did it. And so then we educated the officers and we, you know, so our, our, we're not here to give tickets. We're not here to, you know, to do this. We're yeah. here to, to educate and, and to, to keep our community as he healthy as possible. And maybe because Sunderland has really, really done an amazing job of staying inside, of, of um, wearing masks. And we have been very, very low. Uh, and in fact, the last three weeks, we have not had a new case in our town. Good. That's great. So knock on wood. I did it at the Board of Selectmen meeting. <laughs> I said, we got to knock on wood. <laughs> Um, you know, so, I mean, it's been great. And I think we've all worked together to do this kind of thing. We're also a very rural community. Um, and we have, you know, a couple of housing complexes, but in general, we're extremely rural. Last few so, weeks, we have not one case of coronavirus. But, so I think, I think that, um, you know, I think that you've got the idea. It is a top-down issue with us. You know, and that that was our big issue. Right. And I, you understand that? You got yeah. it. Yeah. Obviously, if we come in and you, you know, there's a person in the aisle without one, <laughs> that is not something. Okay. Yeah. We would, you know, and 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 you know, you've got maybe a young kid behind the counter, who might have said, "Please put a mask on," and you've got a 60-year-old man who was arguing with him. We get that. Right. Yeah. But, you know, you do the best you can. Fair so enough. Leading by example is the first thing we need to do. Yes. Yep. Yep. Okay. Do you have any questions or anything? Nope. No, that was just, that was just my main concern. I just didn't want to, you know, we get like that, you, said, you know, I, 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 I was the first one. I'm the first one to admit that I wasn't adhering to it, but now I am. And I totally understand why. And, the reasons and I should have listened to my wife who's in the healthcare field and she kept telling me you're gonna have to wear them you have to wear them and I'm, I am not wearing them and but well that no. was your first mistake yeah I know first mistake don't listen to <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So you have my word that I will be wearing the mask and so will all my employees. So we're good on that end. All right. Well, if you ever, please call us if you ever have a problem. Yeah. Okay. Steve, Steve's around or, you know, call, call me or Ken or somebody, you know, or yeah. Yep. Cindy's always available too. Yeah. Yep. Very good. Okay. Thanks. Okay. A lot, Thank, you. Thank, Thank you very you, much. Glenn. Thanks Glenn. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Steve. Take care, Glenn. All right. Bye all. Bye, Bye. Glenn. Bye all. All right. Okay. Um, now we're going to go to the Board of Health meeting uh, minutes from last week, last month. Sorry, May 18th. Um, and uh, it was a Zoom meeting. There were no appointments. I'm determining. I make. Yes. I make a uh, motion to accept them for May 18th. I'll second that. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. 2 0. Accept it. Because I wasn't there. Right. Thank you. All right. Old business. We've got online permitting again. So um, very quickly, uh, Bruce, we are now permitting um, online on a, well, <laughs> now we're not doing anything, but there was a, well, we could still do it from home. Um, our permits can be um, requested online. Uh, we have a kiosk set up in town hall, uh, but um, it's brand, pretty brand new. Our permits can be requested online. Payment can be made online, I believe. And um, Steve, can scheduling be done online or does that still have to go through Cindy? The, I didn't know any of the health stuff was online. I thought it was just the building department that's uh, online. No, the health stuff is online. Oh. Um, then forgive my. I don't my know if scheduling is. It's scheduling, um, <laughs> I'm still going through Cindy or directly through me. Okay, I know this stuff can be requested online. Okay, um, we've not worked out those details yet. So, so well, is... that's the problem. And um, we uh, we have asked for a tutorial from the online company. And they were supposed to come out, you know, they kept saying next month, next month, next month. And so we don't have an update at this time as to when they're gonna show us how the program works. But if I recall correctly, Cindy did say that you can access our permitting online. <clears throat> okay, I, I will check in with Cindy on that. Okay, you, you don't think we can? I had no idea that it was even possible, so I didn't know. I'm pretty sure we were up and running. All right. Well. But, but now, now I'm not so sure. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we're going to check with Cindy. <clears throat> the whole point of that, Bruce, is so that um, eventually all the departments can see what is being done at one site mm -hmm. and what has been done in one place, if that makes sense. You know, to see what has already been done at one job site. So eventually it'll, it's gonna be great. <laughs> um, so we're gonna table that as no updated. We'll move on to the 2020 pool protocol. So um, the 2020 pool protocol, because of the COVID-19, we have two semi-public swimming pools in Sunderland. One is at Cliffside, one is at Sugarloaf. And uh, effective June 15th, the, there were um, 
Board of Health made requirements for operating them. And uh, all pools must have an attendant present whenever the pool is in operation. The attendant responsibilities will include, but not limited to making sure um, that social distancing is required at all times, well, is followed at all times in and outside of the water. Masks are worn at all times except when swimming. Uh, every person entering the pool have, have their take, temperature taken and anyone with a temperature of 100.3 may not enter. I'm assuming it's 100.3 or higher. Uh, all common use equipment must be sanitized between uses. This includes chairs, tables, and any other equipment. Maximum occupancy of the pool and area within the pool enclosure is limited to 40% of the bather load of the pool. And then addis additional guidance for outdoor events, we gave a link to the CDC guidelines. So, um, how did, was this received by the two uh, residences, Steve? Uh, it was received fine. The, the pool operators are happy with it. Both pools have been inspected and given permission to open. So, and uh, Sugarloaf has hired lifeguards. Uh, Cliffside has hired two of their residents who were both employed with them last year, apparently. And, uh, and I've put both pools on notice that there will be at least one unannounced inspection during the operation of the thing. So they're happy with it. Um, their setups, they've removed a lot of the lounge chairs and tables and space remaining appropriately uh, distance. I think it's going to work. Okay, great. Is, is the new apartment complex, do they have a pool going in? Uh, I believe they have a fitness center that may include an indoor pool, but they are not scheduled to be open till August. But that's, uh, I'll add that to the list of another pool that has to be permitted. Okay. Actually, interestingly enough, they've never applied to the Board of Health for a permit to construct a pool. So I will follow up on that as well. Thank you, Steve. Thanks. Um, restaurant grocery sales. Did that ever, um, I know we voted on that at the Board of Selectmen's meeting. Well, I mean, I didn't vote on it. They kind of asked me about it. Um, to let uh, Bruce and Ken know, um, I was uh, asked to go to a Board of Selectmen meeting where the uh, Blue Heron was asking the Board of Selectmen to um, uh, I'm looking to see what they signed here. They signed an order. Uh, that was in our packet, the paperwork with what yeah, they signed and everything. To, and also they do advertise that online on their website. What right, to, to change the zoning or license requirements. I'm not even sure though that the zoning or license requirements needed to be changed, but they requested uh, to sell grocery items. So that was changed by the, um, the Board of Selectmen. The only thing I said during that meeting was that they needed to still follow all the Board of Health rules regarding um, any type of uh, selling any type of um, hot food or dated food or anything like that. And they needed to contact Steve to get a list of um, guidelines for the packaged foods, the fresh packaged foods to be sold. Steve, you um, went through that with them? Yes, I, I spoke with Deb Snow of Blue Heron several times and um, told her that basically all state, local and 
uh, federal regulations apply to presentation, packaging, and temperature control, and ingredient labeling. And she uh, was completely on top of it. She was already well aware. Okay. Um, she probably uh, gets the prize as the proprietor of a restaurant that is most on top of the code. Okay, good. That's good. Um, there's, this is not in, um, all right, well, I'm going to, we'll, uh, we'll address it in new business. Um, so we'll move on to new business. Um, as of today, rest, restaurants are allowed to serve inside. So, um, starting at like, I don't know, five o'clock this morning. Or six o'clock this morning with the emails and the phone calls as of last night. Um, so Bruce and Ken, just so you know how things seem to work around here. <laughs> um, <laughs> Thank things you. Are coming in over the weekend of the morning before everybody wants to open up for indoor eating. <laughs> and so of course I start texting Steve at nine o'clock at night and then he's emails go out around 6 a.m. the next morning. Um, and I asked him if he would go inspect the Dove's Nest and any other restaurant that seems to want to open for indoor eating. Uh, luckily, it was a Monday. Not everything opens on Monday. So, uh, so Steve, real quick, how did everything go with the first indoor eating day? The Well, nobody's doing it yet. Uh... The Wendy, the owner of the Dove's Nest, when I visited her, she showed me her seating plans, how she'd laid the place out, her alternative plan in case somebody, a party of six wants to come in. That's only going to be by reservation, but she's really on top of all of the distancing. Okay. We went over some of the few details. I gave her a wealth of literature from MassGov on restaurant opening, COVID checklists, and other guidance that came out last Friday, most of which she was already doing. And uh, we also had a conversation about uh, less expensive ways to disinfect and a little bit of the distinction between sanitizing and disinfecting, that disinfecting is actually killing everything and sanitizing is killing a percentage of everything. So she is, uh, she is probably going to open Wednesday, maybe tomorrow, if she uh, gets enough, uh, gets everything done in time. And then we exchange cell phone numbers and she'll call me if she has any questions. Great. And just about every place else is closed on Mondays. Okay. Steve, are these regulations statewide or are they in sections of the state? For instance, all the restaurants in Massachusetts can open today, or is it just in certain sections of the state? Uh, that's statewide. So and all the regulations we're talking about are statewide regulations. Yeah, they're they're govern they're emergency orders. So I don't know how that actually what the difference between a state reg and an emergency order may be, but uh, but yes, yeah, statewide indoor dining is allowable. Okay, because up here in New York, they're going by economic zones. There's like 10 economic zones. And depending upon what the caseload is in certain economic zones, they can open up earlier. And, mm -hmm. and, and if they still have a caseload like New York City, they're just in phase one still. Mm -hmm. Where we are, we're in phase three. We'll probably go to phase four next week. Because we have a very low count. Here. Oh, is that its population? No, it's, it's based on economic zones. They have different economic zones in New York State. Huh. And, and it's, uh, you know, it allows certain sections to open up before other sections because like where we are, we've had uh, in five counties up here, they've had uh, 800 cases and that's it. And in the city, of course, that's going crazy down there. So it's yeah. different. And, and it's the same thing in Massachusetts. You have the metropolitan areas that are, that are busier have more cases than rural areas. Sure. And so everybody's getting treated the same, which I don't think is right, but that's my opinion. Yeah. I'm not the governor. Yeah. Well, we did get open, so 
that is uh, that is a good thing. Um, so we'll see how everybody uh, handles it. I, I think everybody in our town, at least, seems to really uh, be taking it seriously and, and doing the social distancing. So I think that, uh, you know, they're going to follow the rules, which is good. And if they don't, we're going to hear about it immediately. We will hear <laughs> about it from people's cell phones from the parking lot. So <laughs> that, is, that, that is something about our town for some reason. <laughs> Okay, um, housing health agent employment agreement. All right. Were they included in the packet? Yes. Yes, they were. All right, I'm getting there. Printed out the whole packet. Nice. Yep. We got Gina McNally. We've got Steve Ball, and we also have the uh, nurse too. Did someone fill in the hourly rate? Does the hourly rate stay the same? Usually, see, it's not in my packet. It's all right. Yep. Article three. All right, I'm getting there. Is, is the contract, Steve, the same as it was last year? Yes. It is? Yeah, it is. And, and for all the agents, it's the same? Yeah. I move that we uh, agree to it and sign them. Second it. Um, we, I just want to check out the amounts before I... The only thing is, is, um, I believe Caitlin, Cindy sent something out about a 2% raise or whatever it was for the, was to all it's, town employees. Yeah. Salary I, information stayed in the contract for service, health information, 12 hours. Okay. I've always been of the opinion that contract employees, they aren't employees of the town. It's a contract services. So they don't fall under the rules and regulations of the town employees. Is that your understanding, Steve and Gina? Uh, my understanding is I'm the town employee. Steve, no, is a, Steve is a town employee. Gina is a contract. Okay. Okay. It's a town employee too. You are? I think so. We we took you out of contract. One of them said it was a contract for services. I'm not sure which one it was. My sense of this is that Gina was has always been a town employee, because when we had contracts with uh, Deb and Dave, they Deb were all required. Were, right. They were contracted and had to produce liability insurance, et cetera, et cetera. And Gina and I you guys. are uh, employees of the town. Okay, okay. And then the public health nurse is definitely a contract. Yeah. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. So I would, uh, I would say. Uh, now, are these, are these uh, yearly contracts or agreements? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so I say, yeah, yeah, I, I would agree if you guys would renew it. Um, and uh, I guess I'm, I'm just trying to think, I know that we're, uh, the, I know that our revolving fund is really so anything above 2% will come out from our revolving account. We can't, our revolving account's really, really tight because of our partners 
So we uh, the the COLA recommendation is you know the two percent is is really what is the best I can do right now. We can't do more than that. We can't do anything because this year the public health nurse is killing us. <laughs> we got a grant, but the grant's not covering all of it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's we yeah we got the CARES grant, but it just didn't cover all of it at all. Can we raise the fees? Um, we have not yet. We we keep to, we're, we've been talking about it, and we're going to because we do. Not, our fees are very reasonable compared to the towns around us. Uh, but um, we should probably but, do that sooner than later. Yeah. I think we're gonna we'll put that on our our uh, our agenda. But um, so I would I would suggest, and you guys can, Bruce and Ken, you know I'm just this is just a, a suggestion. But for now, the best we can do is two percent. Um, I would say I would vote for the two percent. Uh, Second. Ken, do. You, Oh, yeah. Uh, so it's a second for the 2%. Um, all in favor? Aye. Okay, so we'll um, renew the agreement with the 2% uh, cost of living. Thank you. It's the best we could do. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yep. No worries, Caitlin. Okay. Um, so um, public health nurse, um, what we'll do is we will just, uh, she files her report. So I am gonna refer to the public health nurses filed report. Um, and I'll ask that to be made a part of the minutes. Is that the one we got today? Um, let me look. Not the inspections at the apartments or the condo? Nope, nope that's Gina's. Okay. Uh, public health nurse, um, she files it. It'd been the end of last week. And I believe it was that there are no new cases. And You know, it's kind of tough holding on to a phone and trying to throw through paperwork. I know, I'm doing the same thing. <laughs> um, she did send in something about the pop-up testing, but that wasn't her report. That might have been before I got elected when she sent that in. I'm looking. Did she not send something this week? Gina, you, you get her emails, don't you? I did, I do, and I I couldn't find mine tonight. To you vote. know, I, I can't find mine either. I wonder if we didn't get one. I don't think we did because there's nothing in the, the packet I got. There's nothing Just in the packet I got either. Okay, well, what happened last week is she did say she that they're no longer reporting to the... Um, they they've stopped reporting to the um the franklin regional they've disbanded that because they they know like they've disbanded that regional health um because the case load, the cases went down yeah the cases are below a certain level so they're not they're no longer doing that everything's going directly to the state and i think maven uh bruce i don't know if you know but maven is a, um, a central 
um, porting um, database for uh, public health diseases in the state. So a a any type of communicable disease, and obviously now COVID is the top of the heap on the Maven site, but um, so they track all the public uh, health diseases in all of our towns, in every town in Massachusetts. Um, and hmm. at the tracing and the tracking of those diseases. So everything gets reported directly into that database. Uh, and uh, Steve and Cheryl, our public health nurse, has um, access to that database for Sunderland. Okay. And uh, that's how we track uh, whether it's whooping cough or COVID or some other type of communicable disease. So if she doesn't have anything new, she probably, why she didn't file a report with us. Ah, I see. Well, thank you for filling, filling us in on that. Yes, okay. Uh, smoking on restaurant patios do, do during COVID restrictions. You know, this is kind of thrown in there, but it didn't really have to be. Um, I was, we got a question about whether we should make a specific rule about this with regard to the temporary patios. But what I did was I went back into our tobacco, um, what we voted in for our tobacco, I think in 2014, our new tobacco law. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry, our new tobacco regulations, <laughs> and it incorporates any patio, uh, adjacent area to any restaurants. So I don't think we need to, um, we don't need to make any type of rule or vote on anything with regard to these new, these patios popping up at like the Blue Heron or I mean, they all kind of already had patios, but these temporary patios that were popping up because we already had rules, um, employment, uh, smoking, no smoking in, in workplaces um, and adjoining areas, patios, parking lots. So it was put on our, um, it was put on the agenda, but we don't really need it. So if anyone wants to add anything, anyone wants to do, do this you think marijuana? We, uh, I'm sorry, Bruce? Does this include marijuana? Um, no, this is only tobacco and vaping. Um, I don't know. Do you have know. a comment on that, Steve? Uh, I... I never, until this moment, I'd never thought about somebody consuming, uh, smoking marijuana in the thing. It sounds like it may be time to I, amend the regs. I don't believe that's, I don't believe public, I don't know if that's legal in Massachusetts. If smoking marijuana in a restaurant is legal in Massachusetts. I can look up the marijuana law. You know, it's a public, it, it's, it's, it's a public place, but it's not a public place. No, it's a public place. It is, it is considered a public place? Yes. Then it would be illegal to smoke it there then. I think some you, of them- You can't right. smoke it in the public. Right. Yeah, the, uh, the law says you can't use marijuana in any form, smoking, vaping, edibles, et cetera in public or on federal land. Okay. Well, that's concise. So that covers it. Yep, sure does. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right, so. Okay, revolving fund update. What's on the revolving fund update? 
Somehow I only got half of my... Hmm. Where was that? So. If I, if, yeah, I don't know if this is what you're looking for, but it goes under the uh, heading of KP Law PC. Yeah. Our, yeah, I got it right in front of me. All right, I got that. Um, so, I mean, are we going to supposed to? Approve the legal fees. I mean, we've done that before. Okay, so 1,197. Gina, you uh, did all these with the uh, KP Law. Um, this would have been with uh, Jeff Blake. Hundred. One, yep. Pondridge condo, yeah. Yep. So 1,197, so six hours, 6.3. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we'll approve 1,197. KP. Okay, now housing health agent update. Okay. Um, I sort of, because I knew uh, Bruce was coming on, I sort of made a synopsis of what had been going on at 370 um, Montague Road, Pond Ridge Condos. Okay. Um, I have an update as of today. This has been protracted for a number of reasons. The court is kind of slowed down because of COVID-19 and the Mawsons who own the unit had some uh, personal medical, confidential medical problems. So the upshot was that the Mawsons did retain a an attorney named Richard he Herbert. And um, he and the town, Jeff and I decide, um, agreed that um, if the Mawsons didn't vacate, which wasn't anything we required or asked for, but the Mawsons volunteered that they would be vacating the unit um, and if they could have a six week extension, which was ended today on June 21st, they would let me in to inspect without an administrative search warrant as part of an agreement for a six week extension. Um, I did talk with attorney Blake today, um, and he talked with attorney Herbert and I'm going to the Mawson's house tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. To conduct the inspection. They moved out? They did not, to my knowledge, Bruce. Because they said that there was a U Haul there. I guess the Condo Association president thought they were moving out. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of, um, and, and they may have, but we get, I've been getting, you know, conflicting stories of what people in the Condo Association have seen. Um, like the U-Haul, it was the U-Haul was there, I think on the 5th and 6th of June, but then another party at the condo re reported they were basically taking trash and debris out of the unit, not furniture, but it's hearsay, you know, um, I'll know more tomorrow when I, when I'm allowed in to inspect. Well, I can give you an update. I live across the street. Okay, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the U-Haul was there last night, and it was there today. Uh-huh. Same one or a different one that's loaded, Ken? 
Mm-hmm. Well, it's made several trips in the past several days. Okay. And then there was a day or two it wasn't there, and then a day later it was there, and et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Well, I've lived will... there a long time too. But the, the thing is, um, I, I, what Gina said, what uh, there's, we have not or observed any uh, furniture or anything being moved. Yeah, they, so. They've lived there a long time. Yeah. Yes, they have. I think a lot of the reluctance to let me in, among other reasons um, that people have, I, I think, you know, I'm trying to get in to an, inspect a, an allegation of no functioning toilet, but they don't, it, you know, if they're collectors or hoarders, they naturally don't want to let me in. And I understand that completely. So they may have been cleaning out, you know, to let me in. And. I have on some authority that what I will find in there is a composting toilet. We'll see tomorrow at 9 a.m., but that's the Those rule. legal? Yeah, that would be illegal, yes. It, it would be illegal? Yes. But, you know, let's see what, what really is there, because I haven't seen it yet. So I will I will go and I will write a report and we'll take it from there. Thank you. Yes, of course. Um, yeah, thank you, Gina. You're welcome. Um, another issue, 28 South Silver Lane, that's gone back and forth quite a bit, um, partly because the court, the housing court was backed up and didn't get a chance to send an order to the Board of Health of Sunderland with the judges. <clears throat> It wasn't really an order for the Board of Health of Sunderland to inspect the unit, but the judge wanted us to know he had some concerns. Uh, temporary wiring being one and the venting of a clothes dryer. Long story short, again, I'm going there on Wednesday of this week. I just don't know what time yet. I'm coordinating with the occupants. Which, which end of Silver Lane is that on? Is that on the... Uh... Plum Tree Road end or the other end? You know, I think it's on the other end, Bruce, but I haven't been there yet. I've been to 320 South Silver, and that's on the far end. That's on a Plum yes. Tree Road end? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yep. Um, let's see, more, more notes about uh, the Pond Ridge condo. Um, I think that's it, except for today's discovery of a... Um, an illegal apartment at uh, 75 Russell Street. I saw that. Yep. So um, I'm coordinating with uh, our building commissioner. And I, as you know, I have the draft of the letter of the order. So, yeah. Any questions? Okay. What, what about, I don't know whether this comes under your purview or Steve's. What about the Cozy Corner Nursing Home? Do we have any authority to go in and inspect that for a health hazard or anything? Because that's looking pretty bad. And I know they had a lot of water in the basement there on several occasions over the it, winter. It's been shut down, Bruce. I, I know it's shut down, Ken, but I mean, yeah. it, 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 it's pretty well dilapidated when I go by. And, you right. know, it's, it's, you know, what's growing in there, I don't know. You know, and I think, you know, if we can get these buildings that are abandoned early and do something about them, it'll help everybody out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to answer your question, Bruce, if I got a complaint and they were open, I would certainly um, conduct an inspection. And so, uh, Bruce, we would need a complaint from someone in order to move on it something with regards to the, the property. So if a neighbor smelled garbage or something, we would have to get a complaint, unfortunately. Okay. Now maybe, I, I mean, maybe that they're not paying the taxes or maybe the town could look into something with the owner 
when we make a phone call to the owner. I don't know what I mean, we could do something politely that has nothing to do with, you know, forcing. We could make a call and say what what's going on, but there are several buildings in town that are not appealing. Yeah. Residential buildings are you thinking of, Bruce? Yes. Okay. So we could look into hooking into the Attorney General's abandoned housing initiative and right. uh, some of them aren't abandoned. There's people living in them. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, and that we need to come. Well, we, it's still private property. We, we've had this problem. I, I know you have. I know you and, have. And people, the, one of the other problems we have is people call and they don't want to be named on a complaint. And they don't want to, so they want to make these anonymous complaints. <laughs> and we kind of tell them, well, you know, could you give us a little more information or something to, for us to go on? Because when we need to go in, we have to show a judge evidence and an anonymous complaints judges do not like as evidence. So to, for us to actually get inside someplace. So that's that's kind of what we run up against. Yep. But yeah. Okay. Um, and then we have our health agent update. Health agent update. Uh, I've been a little slow the last couple of months. I uh, had a couple of. Uh, uh, health issues that. Oh, are you uh, going to pull the cancer in the lung thing again? <laughs> I don't think you need a full lung. No, no, no. That that's uh, what I'm saying is that's what slowed me down. I'm not. I'm oh. not saying I haven't gotten anything done. Excuses. Uh, <laughs> so meanwhile, uh, back at the ranch, things are picking up with. Uh, phase two and phase two, step one, step two openings. I have spent an inordinate amount of time talking with uh, Caitlin about things like one-on-one uh, -on -one tennis lessons at Maple Ridge Church. Oh, I, I who knows what else, um, restaurants and all of that. Bikers and, at bikers at Bubs. Oh yes, bikers at Bubs that that <laughs> that refuse to were, eat on their bikes. Yeah, and uh, I mean it. It just seems endless. So, mm -hmm. and it, you know, we're this is all new. They, we, I've never gone through a pandemic before, so it takes a lot of time. But otherwise, uh, septic system inspections and perk tests are picking up. We've got did one today. I've got a. Uh, inspection and perk test for Sunderland schedule for Friday and uh, and also some stuff scheduled for next week. So with that and the restaurant inspections, that's been the majority of uh, and COVID openings and researching all of that. That's been the majority of my time most recently. Um, if you could also, I mean, just with the COVID openings, you know, I'd ask that you just, you know, follow through with that, follow up with the, the distancing and, and that kind of stuff. Um, yes, I, you know, Greg, tomorrow know. there'll be a couple. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep up with that. No worries. Yeah. So, and you, you, um, you make the notes and you. Um, I have not been, um, I have not made official inspection reports. Like when I went to Dove's Nest today. Uh, I didn't make an official inspection report because it was about 15 minutes to review a COVID plan for which there's no place in the code to quote that. And then um, I thought I'm a, you know, basically a freebie. Nobody can afford to pay their bills anyway. Yeah, right, so. right. You don't want to charge the inspection fee. I get that. Um, so I've been doing it real quick. I can do it as an official inspection and make notes on it um, easily enough or I can simply type up notes and email them. Which would you prefer? 
Well, I guess you want to type up the notes and email them and, you know, we might be able to get reimbursed on the CARES Act. Okay. I'll keep track of um, that. Then. So why don't you keep track of your time? Because, you know, even since we're not going to charge, I mean, some of these places have, the Dove's Nest have been closed. I don't even know if they're doing takeout. They um, might have done some. They were doing some takeout. Uh, they've got a couple chairs out on the sidewalk in front of it now to yeah. chairs and tables, but. Um, so, I mean, they're hurt. You know, I, we know that, that this, the small businesses in our town are really doing bad. So what I would like, it, you know, is if maybe we could, we can ask the CARES Act to reimburse you for the, for just the COVID, you know, it's gotta be COVID related. So just the COVID inspections. Right. Um, so if you please, yeah, if you could do the inspections and note that it's the COVID inspections um, and then like maybe submit like an invoice to Cindy. I, I can do that. I'll, I'll talk to you offline about the okay. logistics of that. Okay, that's fine. Because I don't want to, I definitely don't want to pass any costs on to the owners at this point. If, would... you know the best of our ability but i want to be able to pay for you and gina so, <laughs> I, get a, I get a question about that when you go in and do an, un, an, un, an unannounced inspection like at the corner store do we pay you or does glenn get charged for that how, how does that work uh steve so i have been on salary from almost the last 20 years i used to be paid seven and a half hours a week and then uh, for the last, I don't know how many years, I've been paid six hours a week. And some weeks run considerably over that. Some weeks run considerably under that. Uh, I think, you know, one of us is getting a good deal. I'm not sure. Uh, I think it's about the, my, so my unannounced actions to someplace like the corner store uh, that will get billed. I'll submit the paperwork and the inspection report to Cindy and she will bill for the time. It, it's the time I enter and the time I leave. So uh, that's why I, I haven't filed any paperwork, official inspection reports, for example, stopping by the Dove's Nest or driving by Bubs and Andrea and her husband are sitting out on the tables trying to, you know, figure out how to get outdoor seating. So I just happened to pull in because I was going by and you know, five minutes doesn't seem but like can, we should be charging. Can, can those events be charged to that CARES Act, whatever that is? You know, like uh, the corner store one. Can we charge that up? Because it is COVID related. Yes. And um, it's not an unlimited um, amount. I mean, we're, we're talking about, I think, total of $5,000, which we're pulling out um, public health nurse, which has now slowed down considerably. Um, so possibly, and we didn't take PPE stuff from it. I don't, so I, I think that if we can, yes, I would like to start submitting, look back at Steve's stuff and start submitting some time for it. Okay. I, I will do that. I, I don't believe that the CARES, I don't think the CARES Act would apply because the town has not occurred any additional expenses for my covert work. I've been paid the same all along. I haven't made any additional money, so. Okay, we'll but, look, we'll look. I just yeah. wanna make sure that we're, you know, I, that, well, here's the thing though, is we haven't been charging the owners for things we could be charging the owners for. Okay, good point. So that's the only thing I'd like to see if we can recoup. Okay. You know, it, it's good. Look, we're going to recoup it one way or the other because this, you know, I'm, we're going to try to recoup it one way or the other because the, hopefully the state, the federal government, ha, ah, laugh, is going to help the states and the states are going to help the towns when the dust settles a little bit. I don't know, but this was one of the ways. So All right. if, if we can get something, I mean, we're not charging these business owners and that's part of the 
economic development promise to mm -hmm. help small businesses. Okay. We're a small town. <laughs> so, you know, hopefully we can try to recoup some of our loss by helping out the small businesses. We'll see. You know, it, we're not going to die without it, but I sure would like to recoup something. I agree. So you and I'll sit, Steve, at some point right. during one of your business hours, okay? Yes. Uh, Bruce, Ken, you guys agree? Yep, I agree. I just think it makes fiscal sense if it's, we can try. I mean, what a, okay. Um, well, guys, next Board of Health meeting. Let, I'm looking at my calendar. Oh, July. Hey. Mm. Are you, are you <laughs> going on vacation? I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. I had planned on to be offshore sailing this week and next, but that didn't work. Yeah, that's I'm great. I'm permanent vacation, so it doesn't matter to me. <laughs> <laughs> um. So today's the 22nd. So I'm looking at like the 20th or the 27th. Do you guys have any? 20th. 20th okay for everybody else? Yep. Okay with me. All right. So the next Board of Health meeting. And will that be a remote one again or is that going to be a... Who knows? I am going to... I will say it's remote because I can't imagine... I think everything's shut down, pretty much shut down until at least August. I just go by the court system. Court system's shut until at least August. Speaking as somebody who falls into the highly susceptible category these days because of age and health, I'm happy to meet remotely. Okay. I just assume because I'm in the same category, Steve. <laughs> that makes three of us. <laughs> I heard that giggle, Gina. Yeah. <laughs> Me too, but I just didn't want to look like I was following along. <laughs> See, I have nine-year-old twins at home, so I try to get out of the house as much as possible. So, <laughs> All right. So, guys, thank you so much. This was a long meeting. We usually try to keep it to an hour. Um, but we had a lot of information to go on today. And... Uh, we had a lot of stuff to go over. Okay, I know you need a motion. Yep. So, uh, motion uh, to uh, close the meeting. Second. All right. Uh, vote three. Uh, everybody's <laughs> in favor. Aye. Uh, Aye. Great. Three zero. Motion. The meeting closed at seven twenty nine.